There is actually so much to talk about the Dell Attitude 7485, it being such a versatile device that I'm not even quite sure where I should even start. And that's why I would say let's just jump right into it and take a look at what we are actually getting here. Because at first glance this might just look like a laptop but it is not and it's not even a regular laptop convertible because as you can see here we can easily attach the tablet from the keyboard dock and this will allow for quite some versatility. And taking a little bit of a closer look at the tablet itself I gotta say nice small bezels you can still easily hold on to them the build quality is really nice nothing really creaks it does bend a little bit which is of course to be expected we have the cameras on the back also the windows hello camera at the front with the two speakers in terms of ports maybe not all that much because here we can see the volume rocker along with the sd card and sim card tray two usb-c one is thunderbolt one is thunderbolt and for the charging the headphone jack and on the right side we only get the lock with the power button and on the top we get the power button. So that's pretty much all it. Of course, at the bottom, the docking mechanism. And let's get into that first, because as you can see, using it like this, you could just use it as a regular laptop. You can see this is the maximum angle and you can actually hold on to this. The mechanism is strong enough, but what it actually also allows for is to be used the other way around. And then you could also maybe use it a little bit nicer with the pen or something like that. And I definitely gotta say this allows for extra versatility because yeah, you don't get a 360 degree hinge, but this way you can easily use it as one like this. So let's attach it once again and see this a little bit up close. This would be it. The Windows Hello camera actually works quite well. It at this moment didn't get me because I would say at this price range, we still could expect to get, and now it did work, to get a fingerprint reader. The Windows Hello camera is an absolutely top alternative for that, but still for the price, it wouldn't have been expected too much. Now, what about the keyboard? If we get a little bit closer up, I gotta say only one thing. This keyboard is fantastic because as you can see here, we get a high amount of travel. It is super nice to dampen. It is very quiet. The feedback is great because the actuation point is also spot on. We get of course backlight. We get all the shortcuts. You can also use the function lock. The layout is quite okay here, maybe a little bit cramped. After all, it isn't the biggest device, but I can't say anything bad about it. Some people, especially known from the Latitude series, might miss the track pointer, but I definitely did not. But I gotta say, the typing here was just a joy. Now about that trackpad, I gotta say, it could be sometimes a little bit bigger because it's not super precise. I gotta say, in some aspects, it seems a little bit delayed, but it is a precision track point, this um, trackpad. And this means we have four finger gestures, three finger gestures in all directions. So up, down, left and right, and also for tap. And this will make the whole trackpad experience so much better. And like I said, the only thing that you have to live with is a little bit of some precision delay so as you can see here you can scroll very nice but it's not quite the same i've seen already some slightly better working ones but other than that i can't really say anything so that's why i would say let's get into the next part because we aren't done with the input devices just yet because what we get here at least optional is the the pen so if we quickly check that it is an active pen but i just have to mention that the tip actually could maybe feel a little bit thinner because I can type, of course, or write with it really nicely. The palm rejection was working nice. As you can see, you have, of course, different pressure points. But what it also does, as you can see, if you press a little bit harder, there is a little bit of some distortion of the screen. So I've seen this already on many devices, but for some reason, if you press, you always see one distortion here at this point. So just to be pointed out, but you can, of course, write quite nice, as you can see here. It works all well. I can't really draw, I can't really write all that well, but the precision from what I see, and especially with the tip being quite soft, I cannot complain. It gives a good recognition. It doesn't feel quite as good as, for example, on the Surface Pro or some maybe other ones, but it is definitely quite high up on top. So very good at least. We, of course, have the extra buttons with them. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. It works just as to be expected. Now about the display, let's get into that real quick. And here we can see 100% of sRGB with 81% of Adobe RGB, top value. Also the brightness, about 465. And since this is a, um, a glossy panel, you will need an extra brightness, but then it actually works out quite good, even outdoors. Bright, I mean, the black level is quite good. Contrast is also very strong. And the white point out of the box, already quite good. But I still have to show at least one thing that I did once again. Let me quickly get that done. I did my spider measurement and let's see what it was looking out of the box because of course it can be calibrated and it can be turned off because if we take a look at this now, this would be spider proof. 
So here is it after the calibration, and this was before. You can see colors got a little bit more pale, a little bit colder, but as you can see here, you should definitely calibrate if you wanted the most accurate experience out of it, which you can definitely get though. Other than that, if we would exit the draw mode, we could take a look at the white. Super nice, I definitely like it a lot. Black levels are quite good, as you have seen quite deep, but there is a little bit of light bleed I have to just mention on the upper left part. Otherwise, it's fine though. And since we have a pretty much, let's say, 3K display, high resolution, everything is super sharp. And I gotta say, these days, scaling, in my opinion, doesn't actually seem to be an issue. And with the glossy display, you get vibrant colors, bright, but still accurate. So it is an almost great display. And the only reason why I say almost great is because of the little bit of the flex and the slight little bit of some light bleed. But that's it. Let's check the speaker. Of course, I can't really say much more than the speaker is good. It is at least front firing, which is nice. It is also stereo and it can be blocked or something like that. But the overall sound could have been a little bit louder, maybe a little bit more dynamic. What we get, which is quite nice here, we still get the Max Audio software. For example, here we have some extra tweaking option if you want to add some more brightness because out of the box, it felt a little bit muffled. Of course, we have some extra options here as well. If you will actually use them, I don't know, but the speaker is still good. Now, the headphone jack though is really good because it's very loud, high quality, so clean sound. You can adjust that as well. So yeah, that one is actually really good. Now let's talk about the performance. Let me quickly get to the first thing, the SSD speeds. As you can see, 1600 of read speeds with about 800 of write speeds is great and you therefore would expect a really great cold boot. But I think at least that's what I have the experience from now on that Dell devices take up way too much to get through the BIOS because the cold boot takes about 25 seconds, which for a device as fast as this one is in my opinion just too long and I'm not quite sure what, but it did definitely should improve something with the BIOS because the, the SSD itself can't be it. And the performance though, as you can see here with the Core i, why works out top, especially with the high resolution due to the turbo boost, you can use it for everything really nice. You can of course jump between the apps and everything is just a breeze. It never really struggled. And all I can say is the performance is absolutely top notch for daily use performance. So if you wanna use um, um, Office or if you wanna use it for documents, emails, and also for some content creation, it works. But I still gotta say the same thing as always. It's not meant for that. It is a core why and therefore it won't be able to hold the power for all the time. So you could do some photo and video editing, but I would not expect you to really get the best experience out of it. So I will always recommend this for a little bit of heavier light tasks, so daily use tasks. If you wanna get all the number crunching done and so you can do this. And actually with the high resolution, it can actually deliver a smooth, nice experience with the multitasking. There's also no issue at all, but you should just not look into it. This as a content creation, but after all, it is a business device. And for a business device, it can load heavy images and so on. You can as a business user, do whatever you want to do it for what it's meant to be. Because if we talk about the heat, it gets quite warm even in normal use. I don't see this to be an issue, especially since you will just use it more regularly, in my opinion, at least as a normal laptop like this. And the only part that, that gets warm then is the tablet itself, since this doesn't really dissipate any heat. So it wouldn't be an issue. And I don't think you will do heavy load for a longer period of time, so it would warm up. So yes, it will throttle at actually some point as well. But I simply, with a core i5Y or whatever it is, a Y CPU, cannot blame it for that. And that's why I won't really complain. Now about the noise, the thing that I have to mention here is, Coil wine was not an issue and since it's fan is completely silent. But what I actually did notice once, if the tablet is empty, and then you plug it into the keyboard, which is still charged, then it will actually charge the tablet. And at that mo po moment in time, I actually noticed some coil wind, which, is, which was a little bit annoying. It won't be usually the case because what usually happens is it drains the tablet, the, the keyboard first and then the tablet. But just in case you will use it maybe in that way as well, which doesn't make so much sense. I wanted to just to point it out, but it's not a real issue. Now, what is a little bit of some weirdness is the charging because we get, let me just get it correct. We get a 44, a 34 milliamp hour or watt hour battery for the tablet alone and 20 for 
the keyboard. So in total, 55. So almost 50% more with the keyboard dock. But the problem is it charges 2 hours and 35 just for the tablet and additional 2 hours just for the keyboard dock. So in total, we are at 5.5 hours. That's, in my opinion, way too long, especially if you consider now the total use time. Because the total use time, in my opinion, is still good with about 6, 6.5 hours in my use. I got it down to once again even four and a half, but I also got it with just normal texting, writing emails and so on. I got even up to eight hours and a little bit higher, but my average, I would say six, six and a half. But once again, with all power saving technologies turned off with a brightness of 35%, so quite low, but this panel gets quite early, quite bright. So keep that in mind. As always, I will just say that at about 20, 25% to my six hours and then you get what most people will get. So that's still good, nothing less. Software, I don't think we really need to talk much about it. It comes with the usual Dell software, so the Max Audio software, some other things, nothing you should really bother about. So yeah, that's why I would say let's get into the summary and I changed a little bit something up from the pros and cons. So let's get into it. Port selection is, in my opinion, disappointing due to the lack of USB-A. It's nice to have two Thunderbolts, but one regular USB-A would still have been nice. The build quality is very good design. The tablet, very good, but the combo in itself is a little bit heavy and bulky after all. Fingerprint reader, despite the high price tag, unfortunately not available, but therefore we get Windows Hello and it's pretty much maybe even for some the better alternative. Alternative. Keyboard, absolutely fantastic. The trackpad, not quite as good, but still very good. And it just lacks a slight little bit of precision. Stylus, very good. Soft tip feels also top. The display is almost great, like I said, due to the light bleed and due to the little bit of quality thing if you press it. Then the speaker, quite good, especially for a tablet. Headphone jack, really good. Performance, in my opinion, very good in daily use, but just not meant for heavier tasks. Temperatures, quite high after all. I don't see it to be an issue in normal use, but it can get warm. Noise, none except for coilbind while the keyboard is attached and actually charging, but that's a very rare scenario. But just to be pointed out, battery, good. Software, all good, since we get just a typical Dell software pre-installed. And the value is quite bad after all. Not really affordable for non-business customers. Now here are some notes and the wish list for maybe the next version. Stand for the Surface-like tablet use would have still been nice, because sometimes you just want to use it as a tablet, maybe without the keyboard dock and... I think an extra dock uh, stand would have been nice, but of course, since we have the keyboard dock, it maybe doesn't make so much sense. A silo for the optional stylus in the keyboard would have been great, so you won't lose it, but it's an optional thing, so I get kind of why they didn't include it out of the box in the keyboard. Still not completely free of coil wine. <laughs> why, Dell? Why? Still, you are known for that, so you should at some point fix this, and better battery life would have been a huge plus, at least in my opinion. So let's get to the crux. I think I pretty much said it all with the summary already, but just to get it down, it is, as you have seen, just in terms of quality, it's a really nice device. It is very, very versatile since you can use it in pretty much all modes, just as a tablet with the stylus. Trackpad works great. You can use it just as a touch screen. You have so many options. You even have the extra option with the keyboard dock to charge your tablet once again. So this allows you for a whole lot of versatility with a high quality standard because all the aspects that you have seen are usually at least good if not very good or even better so you get a nice package but it comes with a few trade-offs it is quite heavy as a combo and maybe the most important part it is expensive of course i won't really mention any proper prices because especially in the us they vary quite a lot but I just don't see this to be bought by an average consumer. After all, it is a business device and meant for that since you get extra business support and which is something you just usually pay extra. So I kind of get that. But even for a business device, this is quite expensive. Okay, it's something quite innovative, especially with the tablet being so small and thin and portable. Yeah. <sighs> The device is super nice and just on its own, I could easily recommend it. But with the price in mind, you got to know of how much you will actually have to pay for that. Or if you maybe offer, if your company just takes over that, then you'd get a nice device. If you want something super portable, super powerful, there are different options because there are things with a Core i5, a proper one, not the Y, that just handle performance even better and maybe even are smaller with better battery life. But if you want the versatility these days, you still pay that with an extra amount of bulk. That's all I can say. Okay, until next time. Bye.